Hi, good morning, hello, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon when you're seeing this. Um, this is going to be a quick, really quick review for the midterm, no, for the final exam, excuse me, for the final exam for AHP 215, uh, that's the LPN students. So here we go, get ready for this, it's going to go fast. Know about the seminiferous tubules. The tubules are the small coil tubes that are located within the testes that constantly make sperm. Speaking of which, the spermatic cord is the cord that wraps around the vas deferens and the blood supply and the nerve supply that goes down to each testis and uh, continues through the inguinal canal. Uh, in the female, in the uterus, the endometrium is the lining inside of the uterus. That is the lining that is shed on a monthly basis. Uh, that is also where the blastocyst is going to implant. Uh, with regard to the skin, the integumentary system is the study of the skin that includes the oil glands and the hair follicles and all the things that go along with it. Know the number of each of the vertebrae. Know that there's seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, and the sacrum has five vertebrae that are all fused together. Know that endocrine glands are the glands that secrete substances, specifically hormones, directly into the blood. Uh, back to the bones, know about the carpal bones. Those are the bones that are found in the hand, and there's eight carpal bones all together. Uh, more bones, know about the bones of the leg. The femur is, of course, the largest bone in the body. The tibia is the large anterior bone, and the fibula is the lateral, thin, long, thin lateral bone of the lower leg. Uh, know that the uterus is uh, the organ, of course, that is going to be where the um, embryo is going to grow and grow. Starts out in a nullagravid female about three inches and then stretches from there. And the nervous system, know about the cerebrospinal fluid. That is the fluid that circulates around the brain and spinal cord, delivered nutrients. Speaking of delivering of nutrients, red blood cells. Remember that those are the cells that transport oxygen throughout the body and they have a life expectancy of about 120 days. Remember that in the red blood cell it is the hemoglobin molecule that actually carries the oxygen. That's the one that seats the oxygen. In the nervous system, we talked about the neurons being the parenchyma or the, um, the main part of the nervous system that is gonna send messages. And I said that the space in between uh, neuron to dendrite is called the synaptic gap, synaptic gap or synaptic cleft, sometimes even synaptic space. Uh, when it comes to the nervous system or the neurons in general, there is a brief period of time where the axon cannot um, depolarize again. This is called a refractory period, where there is going to be a moment of the, ac the axon of the neuron resisting re-stimulation. In the male reproductive system, remember the uh, prostate is the walnut-sized gland located at the base of the urinary bladder, some sort of shaped like a walnut, in fact. In the female, remember that ovulation occurs on approximately day 14 of the reproductive cycle and uh, that it is the follicle in the ovary that ruptures and releases the egg. So those two things. Uh, also in the female, remember that it is the mons pubis, that is the fatty pad located above the pubic synthesis. In the males, remember that in the ejaculate there is 100 to 500 million sperm per ejaculate. 100 to 500 million. In the uh, urinary system, the ureters that deliver the urine from the kidneys down to the urinary bladder are tubes that have smooth muscle in their walls that propels the urine down to the bladder. Uh, in the chemistry section, remember that water is a polar type of a molecule. In the, cerebrus, in, the, no, in the nervous system, back to the nervous system, the area that is unique to the spinal cord above the dura mater is called the epidural space. That is where an anesthetic is delivered um, in that procedure that people often refer to simply as an epidural. In the male reproductive system, remember the testicle is a combination of both the testis and the epididymis together. Uh, speaking of the renal system again, what do the kidneys do? Uh, their main job is to regulate the composition of blood and remove waste products from the body. But there's three other things that the kidneys do, and that is to regulate blood pressure they are going to regulate blood pH, and they are going to regulate red blood cell production. In the kidneys, there is a functional unit called the nephron, that is the parenchyma of the kidneys. The nephron is the unit where we find the filter, the glomerulus. 
in the nervous system, the brain stem is the part that connects the spinal cord to the brain, and there are three parts to it. From top to bottom, it is the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. Speaking of the brain and the areas around the brain, the lines around the brain are called the meninges. Here's the cat. Cambridge, say hello. Cambridge. Cambridge. Get. Come on, you gotta get down. Come on. Come on, little, get down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get down. There you go. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, inflammation of the meninges is meningitis, of course. Remember that neurons are the cells of the nervous tissue that send the messages. Uh, back in the chemistry uh, section, we talked about pH, and we said that if we add more protons to a solution, more hydrogen, ion, more hydrogen ions, that is going to increase uh, the acidity, which is going to decrease the pH. So the number of the pH actually goes down, but the acidity increases. Uh, we also talked about how organic compounds are compounds that have carbon to carbon or carbon to hydrogen bonds. We also talked about how um, the difference between a saturated fat and a poly and an unsaturated fat is the number of hydrogens uh, that are found attached to the attached to the carbons. So that a saturated fat is going to have uh, completely covered in hydrogens. You can't fit another one on. It is literally saturated. We talked about the brain, the different parts of the cerebrum specifically, and, and some of the things that they did. Remember, the frontal lobe of the cerebrum de, um, is going to decide what happens in front of you. That is where we determine the benefits and consequences of future actions. The occipital lobe is where we find the visual cortex, so that's actually where we see. It's like having eyes in the back of your head. Uh, the vas deferens, this is in the male reproductive system. We said the vas deferens is the tube that takes uh, the sperm from each testis back into uh, the pelvic cavity behind the urinary bladder into the seminal vesicles. Those V-shaped glands are located on the posterior aspect of the bladder. Those are called the ve seminal vesicles and that's where about 70% of all the seminal fluid comes from. In the female's menstrual period, in the female female's menstrual cycle, the ischemic phase happens around day 27, 28. It's where blood supply gets cut off. In the diencephalon, in the brain, there is an area called the pineal gland which produces a melatonin. Melatonin is what regulates the wake sleep cycle. Um, so it's the pineal gland that is going to release the melatonin. Don't confuse that with melanin. Melanin is that pigment that we make on our skin to block out UV radiation. Make sure you know about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is going to uh, be the result of decreased amounts of dopamine. We're gonna see things like attention tremors and a shuffling gait. Uh, the scrotum in the male is the sac of tissue that holds the testes located behind the penis in the front of the legs. Uh, the word anemia, remember anemia in and of itself is not a disease, it is a sign of a disease, indicating there's some kind of deficiency in the oxygen delivery system. Uh, when we talked about the nervous system, I said that uh, the neuroglia cells are the cells that help support the neurons in the nervous system and the uh, one I specifically mentioned were the astrocytes. Those are the cells that make up the blood-brain barrier. In the muscle section, we talked about the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It's called the prayer muscle. It has two places where it starts, the sternum the sternum, and the, cli and the clavicle. That's the cladoid that inserts on the mastoid process, sternocleidomastoid. The diaphragm is another important muscle that is going to separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, and the diaphragm, when it contracts, this dome-shaped muscle is going to flatten out to an extent, and that's going to cause air to come rushing into the lungs. Remember in the immune system, I talked about the white blood cells. The white blood cells uh, are going to either help fight off things that don't belong, like pathogens, for instance, and the white blood cell that is targeted by the human immunodeficiency virus is, of course, the CD4 cell, also known as the helper T cell. Uh, the term rectus means straight, remember that, the rectus means straight, so the straight part of the large intestines is the rectum, because rectus means straight. In the endocrine system, we talked about the antidiuretic hormone, ADH. ADH is going to cause water to be reabsorbed in the tubules of the uh, nephron, so it brings the water back into the system. Uh, the reason females get urinary tract infections so much more commonly than men is because the female has a much shorter urethra, which is going to increase the likelihood of bacteria ascending into the bladder. In the skin, I talked about the hypodermis. This is made up of those fat-storing cells we call adipocytes. 
In the endocrine system, we talked about aldosterone. Aldosterone is going to be the hormone that's going to regulate the amount of sodium that comes back into the blood. If you get sodium in the blood, water's going to follow sodium because water follows salt, and that is going to increase blood pressure. Uh, the lid-like structure that flips over, that allows food to go down the esophagus and not down into the larynx and trachea is the epiglottis. Uh, we talked in the cardiovascular system, talked about the brachiocephalic artery. The brachiocephalic artery is that big main first branch, not the first branches, but that big main branch off the aortic arch that comes over to the right side and is going to split off into the right subclavian and right common carotid artery. Remember when blood comes back from the lungs, it is going to go to the left side of the heart, which means the first chamber it's going to go into is the left atrium, and then from the left atrium to the left ventricle, it's going to pass through the bicuspid valve. If you're on the right side of the heart, from the right atrium to the right ventricle, blood's going to go from the right atrium to the right ventricle to the tricuspid valve. Remember, going from right to left is always try before you buy. If you look at an ECG, we know the P wave is going to represent depolarization of the SA node. It's also going to represent depolarization of the atria. The QRS complex is going to represent depolarization of the ventricles, and the T wave is going to represent repolarization of the ventricles. It is the only one that represents repolarization, and of course the T wave represents repolarization of the ventricles. Talked about the vas deferens a little bit. The vas deferens are those tubes that come from the testes, and they're going to bring the sperm back up into the seminal vesicles. Those are the tubes that are cut in a vasectomy, or as I call it, a vasectomy. Remember in the stages of labor, the first stage of labor is divided into two main parts. Um, but this is where we're going to see cervical dilation go from 0 to 10 centimeters. We're going to see cervical effacement from 0 to 100%. The second stage of labor is going to be when there's crowning the baby, and the second stage of labor ends when the baby is delivered. So technically, the baby is delivered in the second stage of labor. In the third stage of labor, we're going to have the placenta being delivered, and the fourth stage of labor is maternal stabilization. Uh, back to some bones. We talked about the bones of the arm. The humerus, of course, are the upper arm bone. The lower arm bones are the radius and the ulna. The radius is the lateral bone that is located on the thumb side and it follows the thumb. The ulna is the lower arm bone located on the medial side and is on the pinky side. Make sure you know where the pancreas is located. Of course, the pancreas is located posterior to the stomach and the abdominal pelvic cavity. Uh, there is a muscular doorway between the esophagus and the stomach called the lower esophageal sphincter. Um, the renal arteries are the branches off of the aorta that take blood directly to the kidneys. Remember the pancreas releases glucagon. This is a hormone that is released during the starvation state from the alpha cells. The coronary arteries are the arteries that sit right on top of the heart. They deliver blood to the heart themselves. The two hormones that work together to increase metabolism is T3 and T4, triadothyronine and thyroxine, but we just call them T3 and T4, working in synergism. In the heart, the SA node is also known as the pacemaker. In the large intestines, the sigmoid colon is the S-shaped part of the colon, because of course sigma means, this is Greek for the letter S. <clears throat> the rounded dome-shaped part of the, of the uterus, the rounded dome-shaped part of the bladder, the rounded dome-shaped part of the stomach is all called the fundus. Um, the larynx is a part of the reproduct, is part of the respiratory system, where we're going to find the true vocal cords. The inhibitory hormones are hormones that specifically tell an uh, organ or gland or a cell not to do something. The thymus is that unusual piece of tissue that is located in the thoracic cavity. It is the only organ in the body that gets smaller as we get bigger. Oxytocin is released from the posterior pituitary gland and it is going to cause uterine contraction and it is also going to cause the ejection of the milk. Um, the mitochondria is the power plant of the cell. We talked about that before. The trachea has C-shaped rings of cartilage on the anterior portion to allow to maintain rigidity. The suffix rhea, R-R-H-E-A, means an excessive flow. Uh, the stomach, of course, is located in the abdominal pelvic cavity. The blood is known as a type of connective tissue. If we were talking about the renal system, we said before that as the filtrate leaves the Bowman's capsule, it goes into the proximal convoluted tubule. From there, it goes in a loop of Henle and then to the distal convoluted tubule. But when it first leaves the Bowman's capsule, it goes directly in the proximal convoluted tubule. Make sure you know the abbreviation for sodium is NA. The only S-shaped bone in the body is the clavicle. The area between the vulva and the anus is the perineum. Uh, protons are often just abbreviated as H+. Estrogen and progesterone are the two hormones that regulate the menstrual cycle, two main hormones. Earwax is also known as cerumen. Enzymes are types of proteins that catalyze a reaction. <clears throat> when, the, <clears throat> excuse me, when the kidney sense of blood pressure has gone too low, it releases renin, which then goes and activates angiotensinogen. 
just convert angiotensin 1, then angiotensin 2, then increases peripheral resistance, raised blood pressure. <clears throat> the uterus is made of the myometrium mostly, that is the main muscle of the uterus. Osmosis is the passive movement of water across the selectively permeable membrane from an area of low solid concentration and high solid concentration. The hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that does not articulate with another bone. The foramen magnum is the hole in the base of the skull where the spinal cord meets the brain stem meets the brain. And of course, necrosis is cell death. I hope this helps. Please make sure you review this over and over and over and definitely take notes. Okay, good luck.